again and welcome to Spill the Petals, just like spilling the tea and spilling the milk. It's Jackie Lacey and I am here with my trusty sidekick, Renato Segeco. Hey guys. And we have an incredible guest with us today. Not only is it a fellow Floreology teammate, but my mentor, I've told everyone that forever, um, and an incredibly dear friend and icon in the industry, Sharon Magookan. Hey Sharon, how you doing? Good. And I'm always so glad to spend time with you guys. It's always a lot of fun and it makes it not ever feel like work, even when we're working. It just feels like family time. Thanks for having me with you. Yeah, likewise, Sharon. Uh, we, we, we feel the same way. And it's always a treat when you come down and visit uh, teaching a class or shooting a video for uh, Floriology Now. So uh, we welcome this time. This is our sixth? Yeah, episode number six. six episode yeah. number six. And we um, took a couple of weeks off for Thanksgiving. Thank you very much for you guys understanding that. And we want to get right back in it and thought that we would take advantage of talking a little bit about Black Friday. Yeah, true. So this is a little bit of a follow-up uh, from our last podcast where uh, it was titled Cash or Coal. And the National Retail Federation had predicted uh, an increase of sales of about six to eight percent but there were really concerns about inflation and if uh, that would be a, a dampening sales and it looks like the latest um, stats from adobe analytics uh said that uh, black friday sales rose 2.3 percent to 9.1 billion over last year and cyber monday sales rose 5.8 percent to 11.3 billion so uh you know sales weren't damp weren't dampened and i guess uh, i just wanted to get you your opinion of uh, maybe why that why that was well we know how renato loves statistics and we leave those to him <laughs> sharon and i are just going to put it on the line just like it is um it, people just got out and wanted to be in the space they mm -hmm. wanted to actually be in the stores not just online and they did show a 6% increase, I think it was, That's right. for online sales, which translated into, I don't know, two or three billion more dollars than what they did last year. But Sharon, what's your feeling on why people actually wanted to be out and about as opposed to uh, shopping online? You know, Jackie, there was a prediction uh, quite a while ago that we would mm -hmm. see this kind of increase in about this time period. And the reason being, whatever we do, we want to do the opposite. That's why there's 80% that's trend and 20% that's counter trend. So the trend was shopping online and you get tired of that. You start to wish to compare products. You start to wish to have some assistance with knowledge of products and stuff. And that means returning to the store. And that was one of the predictions that we saw long ago that brick and mortar would see a resurgence because people want the experience of shopping, not just the expense of shopping. And, and that's um, not only great information to look at, but you know, adding to that, coming off of what we have for the last few years too. I think people just want to get back to what we've missed over the last few years. When we yes. couldn't get out, we were restricted and, and expected to stay in our home because of everything that was going on health-wise. But even with that, we still had some of those situations going on right now. And people were just ready to be back out in person and be with each other. But you know what I didn't hear a whole lot about this year with Black Friday is people fighting mm -hmm. and being really nasty with each other. And it seemed like that kind of um, went to the wayside. Do you, do you think there's a reason for that? I do think there's a reason for that. Just like we wanted to get out, we wanted to have the experience of shopping, interacting with the sales clerk and such. We also wanted to have the experience of being around other people. When online shopping grew so intensely was when we were all so busy that the best we could do to try to manage everything we were managing was to add in online shopping to cover some of the products that we needed. Well, now there's not as many events. There, we're mm -hmm. beginning to have more events and beginning to socialize more, but we're still not to the volume that we were. And I'm not sure we'll ever go back to that volume because we found a, a more of a happy medium. 
but people want to be with people. We've been joking about it in our household. You have to plan to have extra time for the grocery store because so many people are stopping you just to talk and interact in the grocery store. And you're thinking, I have to get out of here. So I think that people wanted to go back to the store again to compare products because products have changed over the course of the time to see the volume of products because there was the excess um, stock that was sitting last year, unable to be brought out for sales and on boats, unable to be out to sales. And then that came in plus the new orders came in. So there's this tremendous amount of stock that we haven't had those kind of choices in a very long time. And then people to discuss it with, and you know, we're social creatures. And, you know, just, um, you know, thank you for your feedback on that. And just related to what you just mentioned about stock, uh, a lot of it, I'm sure another factor why sales were so good is uh, folks, uh, retailers were discounting heavily, you know, Definitely. in prep uh, for the you know, Black Friday and had all these specials. So I'm sure that, that stimulated sales as well. Cool. 60% well, off sales well in advance of the holiday. You don't usually right. see 60 of sales well in advance but we saw that that was going to be the trend because they have the old stock and the new stock piling up storage how can we move it most quickly and what does that say for a flower shop prepare events to get people in you know bring in an author to do a book signing bring in a potter to do a pottery thing bring in people for events the the wine and cheese with design classes People are looking for ways to interact. Bring them into your store and let them do their socializing there. Interesting that you say that, Sharon, because um, you know you're continuing a theme that we were we again we discussed during the last podcast about engaging people through these in-store events uh, when Gina uh, was on the podcast mm -hmm. with us, and that's what she was going to do with her business. So uh, again, uh, great advice to engage the public. In well, store. and that's a great segue into our topic this mm -hmm. week that we really um, wanted to talk with Sharon about engaging and increasing that engagement with your consumer. And I'm relating it in a, in a way that's understandable for everyone. It's kind of like dating. You want to <laughs> date that customer because you need to get to know them, um, understand what they're looking for, and then be able to provide that education, inspiration, or um, inform them uh, why they need to be purchasing for you. So it's a great segue that you gave us there, Sharon, to move right into that. And um, do, do you understand and agree with what I'm talking about in looking at this as though you are you want to increase your consumer list, you want to bring in new customers, but you also don't want to forget those customers that you already have mm -hmm. because it's so important to remember they already understand you they're already there. So having variety of things that will appeal to who you already have and who you're trying to engage with is incredibly important. Well, I think one thing that we always go back to is we like people like ourselves. We like people we find something in common with, and we like to network with people who have our same passions. So when you are a person who loves flowers and you go to the flower shop, you find that there's somebody who shares a passion that you have. So what our job as a retailer is to connect our product and our purpose to their passion. And that's easy because it's our passion as well. So I do think it's important to reach out to, to customers that you already have. It is less expensive to maintain a customer than it is to get a new one. At the same time, because there's always a turnover of customers, you've got to be adding new customers to keep the balance of the number of customers. One way that I would suggest that is when you're making your plans of connections or products or theme related sales and all think generationally because the generations buy in a different manner. So while you appeal to one generation with this particular movement, remember to schedule the next one to reach out to the next generation and reach out to them in ways that they like. I get frustrated by companies or doctor's offices that will only relate to you in text. There are times I just want to ask a question and be answered. Yet on the other hand, 
there are generations that only want to do text. So if you determine what is the best way to connect with your customer and reach out to them in that way, social, email, text, phone, in-store, mm -hmm. that's when you'll make that connection and they say, that person is like myself and they're more comfortable com to come to you. You know, I just want to uh, dive a little deeper on, on what you mentioned, especially on the social end and the, um, and the generational dimension to social. There's one thing that, you know, Jackie and I have been um, really preaching yeah. over the past year and a half. <laughs> and what I think what, when, when the one thing that people need to understand about social is that uh, it, you could use it to segment target your audiences. So, um, and this is something that we've shared in, in presentations, but uh, we'll, we'll provide a quick overview for you right now. You know, right now, uh, Facebook is st should still be your number one social media to really target older millennials, generation Xers like me, and boomers. If you want to target, um, you know, just all millennials and mostly women, that would be, um, you know, Instagram. And if you want to target a much younger generation, um, then start, you know, checking out uh, TikTok and uh, YouTube and, and, and places like that. But I think uh, what's what's important here is that, you know, I think florists need to really uh, think of their marketing as like multimodal and start, you know, developing the skill sets to reach out to, you know, to their audiences that way. and. Um, you know, I, I had mentioned a handful of, of, of social media, but I think the big skill set that um, we would recommend florists develop is their video skills and their in-person you know, presentation skills. What do you guys think of that? Well, it's kind of one of the things that, that was next, actually, on the list to talk about. Mm. And, and then it's, it's this format in itself, podcast, um, because the growth has kind of been slow, I think. Um, and there's been waves, especially over the last few years of getting used to virtual, but um, it, it, we see now a resurgence of mm -hmm. new podcasts uh, popping up everywhere. And it's a great way to connect. And in fact, Sharon, you, ha you have a podcast. Um, I want to tell us a little bit about why you why you yep. felt like it, uh, the time to start that. And I think it's been about a year. You can tell us um, exactly, but um, why did you think that was the best time to start? I do have a podcast called How We Bloom with Smithers Oasis. And we also have a blog, Floral um, Hub. And mm -hmm. the reason that we looked at it was because we were saying, how can we reach really busy consumers. This was before COVID. So we were looking at our floral network and we said, how can we reach them with information? We were already doing the blog. We've done it about five years and it has been very successful. But along with readers, there are listeners. I'm one myself. As I'm doing things driving or doing things in the office or whatever, I'm listening to a podcast usually. You may not realize it, but podcasts actually started in 1980, and they kind of came into their own in 2004 when iPods became very popular. Podcast meaning iPod and broadcast. People could listen to on their iPods. And fast forward that to 2022, when there are 2 million podcasts who wow. generate about 48 million broadcasts each year in 2022. Look at that scale. That's so amazing. if you're trying to reach out to a customer, as I mentioned earlier, in ways that they can be reached, here's three ways. You have the reader the blog, like Floral Hub. You have the podcast you listen to, like How We Bloom with Smithers Oasis. And you have your version of podcast, which is video for people who want to watch. Mm -hmm. Renato loves to watch. I love to listen. And so and that means you're going to have to say you love the blog, Jackie. So <laughs> well, I, I get caught in the middle because I love both. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So that way you're servicing each area. And that goes back to what I was saying about connecting with the customer. So they say, you're just like me and they can identify. 
An interesting thing, when it first started, around the 2007-ish times, when I started really listening to podcasts a lot, mm -hmm. I would listen for a while, and if they didn't have enough diversity, I'd get tired of them and move to another one. I'm starting to circle back around and finding those in, uh, initial ones. I heard one the other day, and I was like, that voice is familiar to me. When did they start? I'd listened to them when they started, and now I'm back. Um, that was... 2009 and now in 2022 i'm picking back up with them again it's a circle within the network that brings you around to that information but the best part about a podcast is i listen for diversity i will listen on podcasts to things i'm not going to read and i'm not going to follow and that gives me a different perspective than i would have had because i'll listen i wouldn't watch a video of that nature but if it's just something I can listen to, I will. So I think that's true of your customers also. That's also why with How We Bloom, that we go for people who dare to do things differently and find out how. And then we learn their techniques and that's how we bloom. So that allows us to acquire those skills. Whenever you have challenge, mm -hmm. you have change. And with change comes opportunity. And from opportunity, there usually are new skills you have to learn to embrace it. And podcast is a good way to start with that because heaven knows we've had change in the past couple of years in the way that we react to our customers and the way our customers shop. Yeah, that's uh, so you're really executing that multimodal model that uh, we were talking about. And just a little insight onto uh, you know, the blog. You know, blogs are usually posted on websites, and um, I'm just going to tell you right now, that's uh, a blog is the number one way to build search engine relevance for any website. So again, like, you know, we always, we're preaching, but, um, you know, for florists out there that, that want that magnet to attract customers, you know, that magnet is search and a blog, uh, adding a blog to your website uh, truly increases the you know, the magnetism of your website on search. So as um, you've, you've discovered, you've, you've evolved that into a podcast as well. So amazing work. Now, Renato, you love numbers. So this one was one that I loved when I discovered it looking up. We now, How We Bloom with Smithers mm -hmm. Oasis, now we have hit 66 countries and over 1,200 cities. I think that's exciting. Well, that's very that's exciting. great. We're 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 just a little minute <laughs> part of that, um, and really just we talked about oh, this and just decided that this was a great way for us to be able to share a lot of the information that we have access to. That we talked to a lot of people in the industry, we're out and about and a lot, and so this was a natural way for the mm -hmm. two of us because everyone knows we love to talk. Um, this was a great <laughs> way for us to be able to share that and to be able to talk to other people in the industry that we felt uh, had a lot of information to share. Well, you know, the other we're thing, very lucky cool because we have work. access to so many experts that there we can just pick up the call. And not every person in our industry has that. So we make the connection between mm -hmm. our listener and our friends who are floral experts. Yeah, sorry for talking a little bit over you, but we were ha we were we shared the same exact thought because if you think of this format what you're witnessing either audibly via a podcast or through our youtube channel in, in a visual way is amazing i mean not too many people know that we're all very close friends or that we've worked in this industry for a very long time or that we have this vast uh, network of other experts that uh, we you know we, we speak with much of the time i think you know a lot of people may think that Jackie is the the expert and you know uh, he could give a presentation on his own but given the 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 a podcast or a format like this we get to uh, actively collaborate you know share and talk about a lot of different ideas and uh, that collaboration produces uh, very new ideas uh, you know potentially new innovation so I think um, it's really key that uh, a, a podcast, you, you do engage the community, uh, your immediate community to, to provide new, new types of information. 
And the other thing the... Okay. 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 No, go ahead. The the other thing that often happens even in our little circle is one idea spawns another idea that none of us would have come from separately, but we all come through two together. And that that's great. Very, very true. Now, what I was going to say is one of the things that I think it's important that we talked about is the importance of engaging with your consumer. And we talked a little bit about with the generational divide and um, also geographical, I think, has a lot to do with it, mm -hmm. as well as the crossover, because we don't often talk about how now just uh, you were talking a little bit now that we cross over within the industry because people don't know um, that we're all friends. It is a really small industry getting smaller, unfortunately, every year. But we do cross from um, from the retail to the educator to the association mm -hmm. managers to um, corporate because we're we're both in a corporate environment, um, and that's a lot of information with a lot of fingers to connect. And so this is a great way for us to be able to utilize and bring all those pieces together. So how could we suggest to our audience how they mm -hmm. can use these same techniques in their businesses? Well, well you know, um, funny, I just wrote a blog about this, <laughs> but you know, I, I used to, I, you know, we're, we're all familiar with the Society of American Florists or the American Floral Endowment, you know, or the uh, Floral Marketing Fund. Mm. And they have a ton of information that is not reaching the consumer. You know why? Because it's not even reaching the industry. Yeah, not even times. reaching the industry at times, but it's there. So, you know, there's an opportunity there for, I think, the retailer to go into those resources, grab studies on uh, flowers uh, and happiness or flowers and plants in the workplace and, or flowers and decor mm -hmm. and take that free information share it with the consumer and they could present themselves in this format or through social or through photos uh, that uh, they could be the experts on flowers and plants and, and that topic and engage with the consumer that way like what you were saying mm -hmm. a, a dating through <clears throat> through education you know so the consumer could then rely on you and trust you uh, because you are now the expert uh, providing all this great information to them and it's a great point of engagement. I'm just going to throw that out there as like one of the best opportunities, I think. What are what are some of the ways, Sharon, that you would suggest that the retailer uh, or our listeners be able to connect better with their consumer? Well, as Renata was saying that, I was thinking he is absolutely correct. There's a vast amount of resource there. However, if you pose that to the flower shop who is already minimal staff very often compared to years past and they would say how do I have time for that so there's a point that I suggest that maybe you hire a younger person with those skills to go in and do that for you and not necessarily younger just a more skilled person that can mm -hmm. make best use of that information and then perhaps you do send out a weekly constant contact with information updates here's what you can use here's how you can use it Maybe you do write your own articles for blogs that purport that information. Maybe you have a column on your Facebook page every week that shares those ideas. That the information is there, it's just taking the time to develop the skill or hire somebody with the skill to get that out. The other thing is to read the information just for yourself and get the suggestions out of it. You know, every blog or every podcast gives do these steps. So take those steps and follow them. Maybe you can't do all of them at one time, but just begin slowly and add to them. I know one time there was a florist that shared the idea that she was having trouble keeping everything straight, her business, her church, her family, her, you know, her kids' school activities. So she started putting it onto a calendar. And then other people said, can I have a copy of your calendar within her shop? And so they started adding theirs to it. Then community, school, church and such, can we, can we put this on your calendar? And she added that. And in no time, 
on the day that she was to release that calendar every month, she'd have to stay all night if it took it the night before to finish the calendar, get them run off, because you had to come into her shop to get a copy of her calendar. And it got up to where 200 people would come in on that day to pick up their calendar. How can you take something as simple as connecting with the needs of people? Remember, we, we look for our purpose and we look for their passion and we connect the two together. How can you do that? Of, as we've said, social, as we've said, in-house events. But maybe it's as simple as just reaching out to people. You have one person in an afternoon who reached out. I know you, you both know Chris Norwood. And he does the happy, which was born out of COVID. And he does just a little happy presentation online. He now has so many followers that he realizes that there are people who are alone for Thanksgiving. He takes out a little bit of time and calls and says, happy Thanksgiving, Miss So-and-so. He's probably the only call she gets that day. They notice they're not there. He has an employee call and say, are you sick? Was there a reason? We know she haven't shown up. 80,000 followers, and he's still taking the time to call and say, we've missed you. How can you do that within your own flower shop? You know, maybe just assign that as a task to somebody. I think the biggest thing is make a plan and then put the plan to a timeline. Because we can talk about all the things we can do, but if we don't have a deadline for doing it, guess what? It's probably not going to happen. Agreed. And there's a, there's a saying that I've heard for a very long time, but um, it has been proven to time and time again, plan your work and work your plan. And that's exactly what you're saying. You have to plan how and, and what is going to work with you and how you make that work to increase these engagements. So, but the bottom line is in today's market, it is just necessary. You have to, and you have to have several types of engagement Although you can take that one concept and massage it in different ways to each of those generations. And don't forget that one of the easiest ways to start is because AFE, SAF, AIFD, a lot of these associations have the information available. And all you do have to do is, is get it, accept it, connect with them, and then be able to pass it on. So it's not like you have to reinvent the wheel on everything as well. Yeah. The pass it on is the key. Exactly. And, 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 changing and, just it generationally. It. and changing it generationally, you have one small concise message. Let's relate it to Christmas. One small Christmas message, thankful for having the gift of their sponsorship, their being your customer, whatever it is. You text that to a millennial, you email that to a boomer, and you call the elderly and share that one same little comment and it, it can go across the board. Absolutely. Same, same mes message, multimodal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Excellent. Excellent. Well, it's just like dating. You got to treat the dates differently <laughs> according to what their <laughs> interests are. <laughs> That's exactly where that, that title came from when it, we started thinking about this and what's the easiest way to can convey that message and, and you're dating several different people at several different ages and it's necessary to be aware of those differences and a lot of them are actually very subtle. Mm -hmm. Well, um, is there anything else that we want to um, talk about as far as podcasts and education? Well, you know, really just um, connect with our podcast and connect with Sharon's <laughs> podcast and connect with any podcast Please. that you feel, you know, uh, feel that would help you uh, in your business and in your in your personal life. Because uh, it's so true with this whole podcast, um, you know, trend is a lot of us are commuting to work. And I think that's where podcasts really could, uh, you know, help you out just in that drive time to, to work. If you have 20, 30, 40 minutes of time, then throw on that podcast. Sharon, tell us again where everyone yeah. can find your podcast. My podcast is How We Bloom, and it is on all of the major um, iTunes, Budsprout. You can go to the oasisfloralproducts.com website and find both the podcast and the blog, Floral Hub blog. Or you can go to any of the, the major podcast um, systems and, and download it. 
And I encourage you to go back and download some of the older ones, too. We have been a year. We're just over a year. And we have really great people in um, listed. Um, Jim Del Prince, um, Klaus Wagner, um, Jill from South Africa about flower healing. My own son, Drew McGookin, who is a designer in New York City, talking about partnering with your customer, Joyce Mason Monheim, pricing professionally. I mean, we cover the gamut. We we don't just talk about one thing. It's a lot of different things. And we have some really great people like Talmadge McLaurin, Paul Miller, Ian Will Prosser all coming forward too. So we have really a lot of great ideas. Chris Norwood's presenting, organizing for Valentine's. They'll come out in a week or so. So a lot of really good information. And the one thing I'd like to point out is that we moved five years worth of digital adoption in just eight short weeks of COVID. So we went into COVID, one kind of business and one kind of consumer, and we came out the other side, a totally changed product on both ends. And I think the, the greatest awareness for me was when I realized that Wi-Fi was my new coworker, both with Floreology and with Smithers Oasis, and working to optimize the skills of that new coworker. I think that's our biggest job. So I would love for you to try our podcast and our blog and let me know what you think. And if you have people you'd love to hear from, I'd love to interview those. And guys, I just can't thank you enough for including me and yours. You know, we always like to get together and Renato and I like to debate all those numbers and Jackie and I like to come up with new thoughts and and what can we do next? I think that, Jackie, don't you think that's probably our greatest conversation? What can we do next? More can... times than not. Yeah, exactly. And, and and we should probably just have a podcast just on that, talking about where we are, <laughs> um, where we're going, because you and I have discussed quite often that a lot of things have changed that will never change back again. So really looking at those changes, what they mean to us, and how to adopt them into our business, I think would be a great a great follow-up um, on another day with you. Well, there you go. It's a date. <laughs> it's a date. <laughs> we're going to look for that sweet spot between what we did and what we're projected to do. We'll do it. That's right. Well, we appreciate everyone watching, listening, and tuning in. And Renato, you want to, to sign us out here? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, just be sure to uh, catch this podcast uh, on the Apple uh podcast network we also publish it on our youtube channel at uh, youtube.com forward slash floriology institute uh, and we also uh publish it on our facebook page so follow us there and uh, get updates uh, on on uh, future topics and remember there is no use in crying over spilled petals we'll see you again next time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>